today, there's a kind of okay-ish bit of land spans between the Tim Horton socialists in the country whose language we were forced to learn because we only had one language teacher. The land of the free, the home of the gay, from sea to rising sea level. I speak, of course, of America. Listen, our country's pretty gay, but where did it start? No, I'm not talking about when Elizabeth Gillies blessed us with, well, herself. Although that did do a number on my sexuality. When looking up queer history of the United States, I had a bit of a hard time finding anything before 1969. Anyway, you'll find a common argument nowadays is LGBTQIA plus plus dollar sign dollar sign community are such a recent thing. There's no sense of tradition or historical backing. It's just a common thing nowadays. Well, sit the fuck down, shut the fuck up, Karen. I'm about to learn y'all a thing. Let's turn back the clock to the good old days, before the white people decided to fuck everything up. How did the natives handle the gays? Have you ever heard of Two-Spirit? Was Columbus a tranny chaser? Well, buckle up, kids, we're about to investigate. According to Michael Bronxy, author of A Queer History of the United States, Go the Fuck Figure. According to Michael Bronxy, author of Queer History of the United States, homosexuality was treated very nonchalantly by the Native Americans. And there are records of transgender individuals during the Lewis and Clark expeditions. There was evidence of males who showed primarily feminine tendencies being grouped in with the females of the tribe. And vice versa. In fact, a woman who led the men in battle could even have as many as four wives. So, you know, ladies, get to it. God, there is nothing lesbians can't do. And so, in come the white-wigged cucks and their repulsed sky daddy to kink shame the natives. They were on the run from new religious ideals gaining popularity in Elizabethan England. Ideals like Christopher Marlowe insinuating that Jesus was the bottom for John the Baptist. And kink shame they did. By that I mean anyone who was accused of sodomy was whipped, humiliated, strangled, choked, uh, wait. And then along comes a man named Thomas Morton, who basically fucks off with a group of people who were probably straight but didn't like being kink shamed by the Puritans to a place called Marymount. And what did they do when they got to Marymount? They built an 80 foot tall, phallic symbol in the town square. I'm not joking. Eventually, the Puritans found out, like, PENIS AND MY CHRISTIAN MINECRAFT SERVER? And they deported Morton back to England. Now let's skip forward to 1775, when Jemima Wilkinson whomst, well, just whomst, was healed from a chronic fever and announced that Jesus had entered her body and stop them from being a woman. Yeah. <laughs> from then on, they were neuter. They and their anti-sex, anti-gender comrades raged to their heart's content. Did y'all think we were gonna be learning about gender critical today? I didn't think so. And then you have people like Debbie Sampson Gannett, who pulled a Joan of Arc moment and dressed like a male soldier named Robert Schittlerf. Robert Shirtliff, and became the ultimate womanizer. I mean, Mulan could never. In New York, at the turn of the 20th century, you have probably the most important thing to a gay man. Balls. No, 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 not those types of balls. <sighs> not those types either. Just shut up and listen. Starting in the 20s, you had the Harlem ball culture which saw the birth of voguing, drag houses, and about 90% of the phrases used by white gays and sorority girls nowadays. Yes, God, you own everything, sis. Drag her the house down, mama. Boots! <laughs> Dear future me who's editing this, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you want more info on the Harlem ball culture, check out the documentary Paris is Burning on Netflix. Or you could also watch Pose on FX, which is set in the time period. Or if nothing else, check out Opulence by Turf Terminator ContraPoints, as I think they all cover the topic really well. Also, this is gonna take forever to edit, and I'm fucking over it. 
Now it is important to remember, children, that the country was still as dangerously closeted as Tom Cruise is today. Community is united best when they know who to shun. So, I mean, Jews, heretics, gays, furries, lefties, anyone less white than yourself, anyone not Christian, yet these are things to avoid. And if you're one of these groups, well, you get riots. I mean, be gay, do crimes. Later on, in 1969, nice. you have a bunch of angry drag queens destroying stuff, and the gays are doing crazy shit, and the lesbians alone aren't strong enough to fix it all. And what is this all for? Respect? Equal treatment? <clears throat> no way! In 1969, you have the Stonewall Riots in New York. Thanks to cultural badasses and probable actual angels in human form, Marsha Pay It No Mind Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, Stormy De Lavari, Miss Major Griffin Gracie, Thomas Lanigan Schmidt, and Craig Rodwell. I'm not going to go into much more detail because the Stonewall Riots are very easy to research. God, this is going to be a bitch to edit. <laughs> so I think I'm going to stop here. After the Stonewall Riots, the LGBTQIA++ alphabet dollar sign community have made leaps and bounds to where we are today, even legalizing gay marriage. I encourage you, please, Google a gay celebrity. Research ballroom culture. Talk to a gay person. Just not me. <laughs> Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. And be sure to let me know how you guys feel. See you guys in the next one. Bye! Some people don't know what Stonewall is. You know what I mean? They, won't, you tell, like, won't you tell everybody what that is? That was fighting for gay rights mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were, was killed at Stonewall. Nobody was killed, was killed at Stonewall.